This is a recap of A Night Watch, a 2006 Russian fantasy film written and directed by Tamur Bekmabetov. If you enjoy the video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. The action takes place in 1992 in Moscow. A young man, Anton Gorodetsky, comes to a witch with the aim of getting his wife back, who left him for another man. The old witch promised to cope. Examining the witch's apartment, Anton approaches the window and sees there a Gorsvet track and people sitting next to it in special suits. He doesn't attach much importance to it. The witch warns Anton that his wife is expecting a child from her lover and that the child will die in the womb during the witchcraft. Anton agrees. When she was almost done, of the night watch anton's lifestyle is rather dull he drinks vodka befriends his neighbor's vampires the savushkins father and son one day he gets the following mission unknown dark ones started hunting for a teenager igor who succumbed to their call anton's task is to follow him and prevent the hunt for this he drinks pig blood tuning into the vampire call when the boy was already in the hands of the vampires, the evil vampire hairdresser Andre and his girlfriend Larissa, Anton called for reinforcements, the same light ones who took the witch. Meanwhile, a fight breaks out between Anton and Andre. Andre dies at the moment when reinforcements arrive, and Anton is seriously wounded and dying. The Night Watch employees deliver the dying Anton to Gloom, where he is treated by the wise guesser, the head of the Night Watch. Anton recovers and tells him that he found a girl with a curse, funnel, in the subway and tried to save her, but his attempts were futile. The healed Anton was given a partner by the head of the Night Watch, Olga, a witch in the body of an owl, who must protect him from the persecution of the Day Watch. Um. As for the girl, Gesser immediately began an investigation. He quickly found out the name, address of the girl, and what tragic events will happen soon under the influence of the funnel. One of the nearest victims is a plane flying from Antalya. The matter almost came to a disaster. The vampire Larissa thirsts for revenge for the death of her lover. On the advice of the witch Alice, she decides to take Igor hostage. Anton and Olga immediately learned about this. At the last moment, they arrived at the house where Igor lived when the vampire was breaking into the apartment. Deciding to go into the apartment through the twilight, they notice that Igor sees them and falls into the twilight himself, losing consciousness. Olga tells Igor about the world of the others, and that he, as another, must choose which side he will be on, dark or light. At home, Igor Anton found a photo of a boy with his mother, in which he recognized his ex-wife. Meanwhile, the funnel begins to develop, and terrible events occur in the city. The mother of Svetlana's neighbor Maxim Ivanovich, a power plant worker, dies, which soon explodes, as a result of which the whole of Moscow is left without lighting. The last hope for saving people is Anton. In the headquarters, Gesser talks with the magician Zavulin, the head of the day watch, annoyed by Anton's act. At Gesser's request, he gives him an amulet of protection and leaves. Gesser asks Anton to somehow find out who cursed Svetlana. He comes to her home under the guise of a sick patient, but she realizes that he is healthy and demands to leave. Anton begins to understand that the girl lives poorly. She is not married, unattractive by nature. The world has turned away from her. The last straw for Svetlana was her mother's refusal to donate a kidney, which her daughter agreed to. The girl could not stand it and shouted, let me be damned. It becomes clear that she cursed herself, and that Svetlana is another. The curse is lifted, the city returns to its previous life. During the removal of the curse, the Night Watch headquarters learns about the capture of Igor. The boy completely succumbed to the call of the vampire and climbed onto the roof of his house, thus becoming a hostage. Anton learns about this in Svetlana's apartment and comes to the roof at the request of Larissa. 
The vampire demands Anton to take off the amulet and throw away the flashlight. She says that she wants to become human again and accuses the light ones of injustice. Igor manages to run away, and then Zavulin breaks into the scene on the elevator. A battle takes place between them, Zavulin is going to finish off the light one, but he is hindered by Igor who appeared with the amulet. Um. Exhausted Anton, thinking that this is another dark one, takes out a screwdriver and attacks him, the dark lord stops him. Igor is presented with hot arguments that Anton wanted to kill him not only now, but also then, in um. 1992. The boy other, deciding that Anton was looking for him all this time for the sake of killing, and that all the light ones are just as lying, chooses the dark side. It is New Year's Eve of 2006. Anton is still a night watch officer, now working with his trainee and romantic interest, Svetlana. As his son Igor has now become a dark other, Anton is forced to secretly destroy evidence of Igor's attacks on normal people, which violates the treaty, leaving the Night Watch unable to sentence Igor. To redeem for his previous mistake, an attempt to use a witch's service to kill the unborn Igor Anton seeks the legendary Chalk of Fate, a magical chalk that could rewrite history, which was once Tamerlane's property and one of the main reasons for his numerous military successes. Meanwhile, Zavulin, the leader of the Dark Others and their Day Watch, is waiting for Igor's birthday. At the birthday, Igor would become a Great Other and acquire the power that would allow the Dark Others to break the treaty. Zavulin's gratitude to Anton for covering Igor's violations of the treaty doesn't stop him and the Day Watch from attempting to frame Anton for murder and bring him in front of the Inquisition. They succeed, despite the efforts made by Gesser, the head of the Night Watch to protect Anton from the Dark Others by putting him in Olga's body. While in her body, Svetlana confesses that she loves Anton to the person she thinks is Olga, which pushes their relationship forward. This happens despite Svetlana's initial anger at Anton for not telling her that he was in Olga's body. Anton obtains the chalk of fate from its hiding place in an Asian restaurant in Moscow and uses it to summon Igor. They initially get on well, but Igor is resentful when Anton refuses his request to patch things up with Igor's mother. Anton puts his large coat on Igor, who seems to be cold, and leaves to order food. At this time, Svetlana rings Anton's mobile, which he left in the pocket of the coat, and Igor gets angry at her intrusion into his relationship with his father. He smashes the phone and leaves with the chalk, which he takes to Zavulin. Zavulin cannot use or touch the chalk, because doing so would be a direct violation of the treaty, so he has Igor give it to his minion and lover Alicia to do with as she wishes, although it is implied that Zavulin knows what she will do with it. Igor's birthday party begins soon after that. The guests are dark others, some of them are Russian pop stars, although Anton makes his way to the party as Igor's father to expose the real perpetrator of the murder he has been charged with his vampire neighbor, Kostya's father. He is unable, however, to avert a disaster, as Svetlana rushes to the party to find Anton, Igor confronts her. She tries to avoid a conflict, but Igor repeatedly challenges her and expresses resentment at her relationship with his father. Svetlana accidentally strikes Igor and spills a drop of his blood, which Zavulin interprets as a violation of the treaty and thus uses as a pretense to declare all-out war on the light others. Igor, now a great other, unleashes an apocalypse upon Moscow, killing most of the guests and blinding Svetlana. The city is nearly destroyed, starting with the Ostankino Tower. A fierce battle between the light and dark others follows, with few survivors on either side. In the midst of the chaos, Anton, who survives, finds Alicia, who is trying to revive her dead lover, Kostya, but without success. She cannot revive him because her actions did not cause his death. The scene implies the user of the chalk can only change decisions that he or she made, not anyone else's. Anton convinces Alicia to give him the chalk so that he can prevent the destruction of Moscow and the deaths of scores of others, but is almost immediately caught by a panicked Svetlana and an enraged Igor. The two great others fight for Anton, but nearly kill him in the process. Saved at the last minute by Gesser, Anton runs through the ruins of Moscow to the house where he, 14 years ago, made his visit to the witch. The visit that caused the entire sequence of events, starting Anton's own initiation into the Night Watch. Anton writes an O on a wall in this house. 
Moscow reverts to its normal, undemolished state and the film returns to 1992 and the first scene of Night Watch. In the epilogue, as a result of the chalk's influence, Anton rethinks his deal with the witch, and therefore never inadvertently agrees to harm his wife's unborn child, who would have been Igor. He walks out of the house and into the street, where he meets Svetlana. Zavulin and Gesser watch them from a park bench, eager to see if Anton will recognize Svetlana, despite now having never met her because of the rewriting of history. Gesser's prediction turns out to be accurate, despite not knowing how or why, Anton recognizes Svetlana and they walk off together, implicitly striking up a less harried relationship than the one they have slash had in the previous iteration of their lives.